Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you join me for the Lord's Word of God today. So brothers and sisters, before we get into the Word, I want to share a personal experience that happened to me, a testimony, if you will. I came to know the Lord at age four. I started to go to church with my sister, and we would walk to a Christian church. And when I was able to learn to read, I read the Bible and went to church and prayed every day, and I loved the Lord, as I do today. But when I turned 18, from 18 to age 20, I started to run around with a rough crowd, and we lived in a, a dangerous city. And today, most cities are dangerous in the United States, but back then, it was one of the most dangerous cities in the nation. And so my friends were partiers, and they were also what you would call radical. They liked to fight. And so one night we were out and we got into an altercation with a gang. My friends, we did not have a gang, but we stuck together. As we're traveling in my car and they're traveling in their car, we're throwing things at each other. They threw a knife at us. We threw a crowbar into their car and we kept chasing them. And we it went by a party where they had been earlier and so two other carloads people start chasing me as I'm chasing their gang member. So my friends are yelling at me because one of the persons in my car was shot at a week prior by a gang and they had shot into his truck, just barely missing his brother who was sitting in the back of the truck. So I pass the car in front of me and I'm traveling as fast as I can to get to my house to get a gun because we think they have a gun. We end up crashing very close to my home with the original car that I was chasing. We get out and we start fighting and the driver of that car had my crowbar and he hit me right here in the cheek. Thank God I did not fall down because had I fallen down, they would have killed me, I assure you that. But I was able to get to my home to get a gun and then shots were fired, but nobody was hit, thank God. But brothers and sisters, this incident changed my life because I believed that if I had died that day, I would have went to hell. I was a Christian. I was a believer, but I wasn't living like a Christian should be living during that time frame. Do you understand? The word of God says, if you willfully sin after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Well, brothers and sisters, from the age 18 to 20, I was willfully sinning. Do you understand? If you turn your back on God, he will turn his back on you. And so this was a major chastening for me to come back to the kingdom. And I did. I decided to give my life back to the Lord and stop partying. And I joined a boxing club. And so six months to a year later, I'm in a boxing tournament. It's an interstate championship and it happened to be hosted in my hometown. And I was getting ready to fight for the championship and the local newspaper put my name in the paper saying that I was going to be boxing for the championship. And so I went and I boxed and the Lord helped me win. And so as I, I was leaving the arena, I had my gym bag in my left hand and I was walking out with my mother. And I, I looked behind me and the gang that I had that altercation with, including the driver who had hit me with the crowbar, was right behind me. And so I didn't say anything to my mother. I put my arm around her and we walked through the secluded parking lot to get to my car. And I can tell you right now, I was praying earnestly to the Lord Almighty to protect me because I truly believed I was going to get stabbed to death in that parking lot and die in my mother's arms. And I've never told her this. I've never told anybody. But I'm telling you right now that God Almighty protected me through that. He took care of me and put a hedge around me as he did Job and all his Christians. So brothers and sisters, celebrate that. Because if you're living for Jesus, he's going to protect you. And we are going to read about that in the passage we're going to read about where he's going to protect his Christians. Amen? Amen. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Revelations chapter 9, and we'll start reading at verse 1. Then the fifth angel sounded, 
And I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him it was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. And so now, brothers and sisters, in the future, if you want to continue reading that passage on your own, if the Holy Spirit wants to give you the answer to the equation, he will. But we're going to just focus on this part of the passage. This is a precursor of what comes afterward when the Lord takes his church home. So we all want to be ready for that. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, war is coming to the earth. Havoc is coming to the earth. Around this, if you do not have God's seal on your forehead, you will suffer severely. And God's seal on your forehead is the Holy Spirit. So you must have the Holy Spirit to be his. Amen? Amen. And to be covered with that cloud of justice and protected. So brothers and sisters, in that incident that I shared with you earlier, my testimony, I started the action that caused what occurred, which changed my life because I knew if I had died that night, I would have went to hell. But God had another plan. Everyone has a choice in life to serve the Lord or not. And I chose to serve him that night. And from that night forward, he has protected me. Remember, brothers and sisters, the message is if you have Jesus in your heart, you are not going to be affected by this plague that hits the earth. Brothers and sisters, God always warns people before he passes judgment on them. And so if you're not right with God, if you have turned your back on God and he has turned his back on you like the prodigal son or daughter, or if you've never received Jesus in your heart, please humble yourself with me and bow your heads and repeat after me a prayer of repentance. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son to come to die for my sins. I am a sinner, Lord. Please forgive me for all the sins I've ever done. Please help me to stop sinning, Lord. To please you and do your will. And then please fill me up with your Holy Spirit. And write my name in the book of life. And seal me for the day of redemption. And your will always be done, Father, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so if you made that prayer, you made an oath to the Lord to repent from your sinful ways, to change from those sinful ways. And the first step is to have the mind of Jesus, which is to please God and do his will. Brothers and sisters, when you're a babe in Christ, you don't have the Holy Spirit yet because you have a carnal mind and a carnal mind cannot serve God. So you must make proper changes in your life. Get rid of evil company. The Bible says evil company corrupts good habits and it is true. And get rid of anything that causes you to sin. Jesus tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, he wishes no one to perish but to come unto repentance. And that is to turn from your sinful ways. So seek God with good changes to renew your mind. You need to resist the devil when he tempts you with evil thoughts by putting up a barrier, by praying or singing Jesus songs, or reading the Bible, and the devil will flee. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you simply rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus, and he will flee because he cannot stand the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen? 
Amen. We need to wait on the Holy Spirit. In time, it will be manifested. If the Holy Spirit is in you, it will be clearly seen because you will have the fruits of the Spirit. So keep pressing forward for that high calling. And when you are ready, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so brothers and sisters, we need to pray up every day and read up every day. And so if you don't have a Bible, get one and read the New Testament. It teaches us how to grow in Christ and how to live. You need to be fed every day or the body will take over. So brothers and sisters, let us all continue to carry the cross given to us and follow Jesus by taking him as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. And we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.